<sighs> How's my tie? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're really going to go through this again, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There you go. I am Giancarlo Solano Naranjo Coronel Vera, but you can call me Giancarlo. <laughs> Imagine awakening from a dream, startled in a pitch black room, icy sweat dripping from your forehead down to your cheeks and neck like the droplets of water sliding down your windows on a rainy day. It takes a moment for your eyes to settle. Around you lay your parents and siblings, their serene faces lost in a world of slumber. Then you realize you're on a bed in a basement, huddled with your family for warmth. This is my new reality, my new home, my new life. I was born into a privileged family from Ecuador. My parents are the essence of a well-structured family with good morals and work ethic. They had their own businesses and were considered upper class and were prominent in the community. Unfortunately, that all changed when our country was hit with an economic downturn. Banks withheld money and froze accounts. People began to panic and many were so overwhelmed by this depression that they committed suicide. In an ironic way, we were one of the lucky ones. The bank gave enough to manage arrangements to leave the country and start a new life in the United States. We later found ourselves in New York living in a basement, a family of five with little knowledge of English and barely $100 in their pockets. Life was difficult. My father, who has always had his own business, had to adapt and work for another's. And he worked harder than anyone else because he had a family to feed. That first week, he found a job knowing only the simplest phrase, me job, I strong. We eventually moved to Tampa, but many would tremble at the thought of the environment I grew up. My parents managed to become the landlords of a building, but it was in the neighborhood where robbery, prostitution, drugs, and assault were the norm. As I began to grow, I saw my friends begin to change. Saw some, some sought love and appreciation and family through gang violence others through pregnancy, and some by running away. I saw those who I consider family decay and become subjected to the typical stereotypes of society. If, if life has taught me anything, is that the world will never meet you halfway. You must fight and sacrifice in order to reach your goals. I finally made a promise to myself that I would fight to get my family and those of similar circumstances out of this slum that engulfed us. And Avid was my ticket of paradise. In middle school, I was lucky enough to find my first mentor. Dr. Scott, who gave me that thirst for knowledge that seems to disappear as we grow. She somehow managed to help an angry boy fight for what he believed and to speak out when all others stood in silence. I learned how organization was essential to success, for one does not plan to flail, they simply fail to plan. At first we did appear a bit strange, carrying around a gun ready to explode. The only reason I'm not like my surroundings was due to that love I had for my family and of course my avid family. We all search for it, support, acceptance, and love. Unfortunately, we sometimes seek it in the wrong places. In Avid, all of us were different, but it was our diversity that helped accept it and love one another. Life is mercurial. We can't predict the future, but we can always prepare. As I entered high school, there was a point where I began to give up, and that meant giving up on Avid. The first day of my sophomore year, I went straight to the new Avid teacher, Miss Overton, and told her I wanted out. I tried everything, and I mean everything. But she refused to give up on me, and I am so grateful that she didn't, for all that I am is due to the AVID program. Without AVID, I would have never had the desire to challenge myself by taking multiple advanced placement classes. And being that English is my second language, passing my AP language exam and college level literature class, as well as being able to express myself so passionately amongst you all today. Through the program, I also gained the courage to volunteer for and lead a Relay for Life team to help fight cancer. Without AVID, I would have never become so involved in my community. I am now a student leader and coordinator during my neighborhood's Toys for Todd charity events. I was also able to change the lives of students younger than I who desired to drop out of school by mentoring them. I was able to actually make a difference in someone else's life. And I am not the only AVID student who has learned to shine. My AVID peers are an inspiration. We are unique with diverse experiences that many of you would find so overwhelming to overcome. We are the ones who were against the odds. We were the ones who were told would fail. And yet here we stand stronger than ever, more determined than ever. And no one will give up, will keep us from our goals. For we will never give up because we are avid. Thank you.